You place the Crooksite Dal on the Alchemator's small pedestal. But wait, something is happening. You set the Alchemator to cast three perfectly generic objects for some reason, expending a total of six units of Build Grist. These things look completely useless, what a waste! Out of the corner of your eye, you notice there's something in the sky. You switch back to your stack modus and get a closer look with your telescope. Whatever it is, the kernel sprite seems to be particularly agitated about it. You're no astronomer, but its trajectory looks suspiciously head-on with your current perspective. This is a troubling development. You also high-five the Colonel Sprite. You figure you've left him hanging long enough. You think about ingesting a unit of Build Grist. It is tempting because they strongly resemble Rock and Blue Raspberry Gushers. However, the units of Build Grist are a gaming abstraction and do not seem to exist on the physical plane. There is apparently no crisis so imminent that will deter you from contemplating the most idiotic and frivolous of actions. Your dad is getting home. John, what did you do with your PDA this time? I'm working on the bathroom, but we are running low on build grist. <laughs> Upon returning to your room, you find that two chums have been trying to message you. I'm working on the bathroom but we are running low on build risk. Oh man, who cares about the bathroom? Now there's a meteor heading for my house! I see. Do you suppose it has anything to do with the game? I don't know, maybe. What do I do? I think it's very likely. The walkthroughs vaguely suggest an impending threat before they end. The already poorly constructed sentences become even more curt and ambiguous, as if written hastily and with a sense of alarm. Actually, their dedication to updating the walkthrough under such circumstances is admirable. Wow, fascinating! If the meteor is a game construct, I think the only thing to do is to proceed, and try and solve the dilemma on the game's terms. Try using the lathe. It says you can use the card on it, but isn't more specific than that. Okay, I'll do that. Really? It is a labor to read this drivel. If I read any more, my brain will need to be spoon-fed from a jar while it blows spit bubbles in a high chair. I think I will write my own walkthrough. That is, after we make sure you don't die. I heard you got the box. I hope you appreciate my heroic fatherly perseverance in getting it to you, in my rough and tumble, dirty, wife-beaterly sort of way. Also, I hope you appreciate how many no-talent douches had their mitts on that bunny before you. It's like a grubby baton in some huge douchebag marathon. Hey, where are you? Oh man, the bunny was awesome. But I don't have time to talk. I'm playing Spurb, and it's kind of a nightmare. TT is breaking everything in my house. Dude, I told you to steer clear of that game. And for that matter, you should probably wash your hands of flighty broads and their snarky horseshit altogether. And now there's a meteor coming, and I'm not even joking about that. It's like a big asteroid or comet or something in the sky heading right for my house! Oh man, how big is it? I don't know. Big, I guess. I gotta go. We'll talk later if I'm still alive and the Earth isn't blown up. Like the size of Texas, or just Rhode Island? They're always throwing around these geographical comparisons to give us a sense of scale like it really means anything to us. But it's like, it doesn't matter. It's always just like, wow, that's pretty fucking big. Like, Mr. President, there's a meteor coming, sir. Oh yeah, how big is it? It's the size of Texas, sir. Oh shit! Or, how big is it? It's the size of New York City, sir. Oh shit! Sir, I'm afraid the comet is the size of your mom's dick. Oh snap! Sir, are you familiar with Jupiter? You mean like the planet? Yeah? Well, it's that big, sir. Hmm, that sounds pretty big. I have a question. Is it Jupiter? Yes, sir. The Earth is literally under siege by planet fucking Jupiter. Oh, shit! Well, anyway, later. You slip a pre-punched card into a slot on the totem lathe. Above, the tool arm deploys a configuration of chisels. Now you just need something to lathe. Cursing your lack of foresight, you return to the balcony for the Crooksite Dow you left on the pedestal. You navigate the hallway leery of your dad, who is presently puzzling over the new fixture in his hallway.
the perfect crime. You retrieve the Crookside Dowl. Dad just shrugs and heads back downstairs, presumably to do more baking. If only he knew you were hard at work saving his ass. Moving on, you clamp the Crookside into the lathe. The lathe then carves one totem. You take said totem. Alright, I use the lathe to make this blue shapey thing. Now I guess I take it back to the Alchemixer again? Hello? Uh... <laughs> a young lady stands in her bedroom. Due to a violent storm, her house has just lost power, along with her wireless internet connection. This has severed her link to a popular video game she was playing with a young man at a critical moment. That young man is relying on this young lady to re-establish a connection somehow. This young lady named... Named... It's on the tip of your tongue. What was the name of this young lady again? Flighty Broad! No, 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 that wasn't it! Rose Lalonde. Ah, yes, yes, that'll do, that'll do. Your name is Rose. As was previously mentioned, you are without electricity. Although your laptop computer still functions on battery power. You have a variety of interests. You have a passion for rather obscure literature. You enjoy creative writings and are somewhat secretive about it. You have a fondness for the bestially strange and fictitious, and sometimes dabble in psychoanalysis. But you also like to knit. Your room is a bit of a mess, and on occasion, if just the right one strikes your fancy, you like to play video games with your friends. What will you do? Retrieve the arms from the purple box. The purple package's contents are private. No one is allowed to look inside. Rive like a flagellum and puke on your bed. The thought alone makes you sick to your stomach. Then how about you stroke your writing journal and mutter, My precious. You would only resort to such an embarrassing activity while no one was watching. These journals are for your eyes only. You capture log the violin, storing it in the root card of your Psyllidex. Furthermore, you choose to play a haunting refrain on your violin. waste approximately 40 seconds playing the violin while your friend is in peril. Nice time management skills there, sweetheart. Since your good-for-nothing friend is obviously not going to bail you out in time, you issue words of parting fondness to dear sweet Liv. Oh, if only Athla could have been the one to make the final sacrifice instead of her stubborn, blue-collar, salt-of-the-earth father. Then she would fall into your arms for consolation, and you would be the one to make the deceased Bruce Willis proud. Rose chooses to pick up her knitting bag. It occupies the left leaf card under the violin, per the tree modus' alphabetical sorting method. K less than V. Your panoramic window offers a view of your yard below and the mausoleum housing your dead cat, Jaspers, who died when you were young. Your mum had the structure erected with the spirit of a scornful irony in response to your youthfully innocent request to hold a funeral for the animal. At least this is how you have come to interpret the gesture, in retrospect. You can also make out a silhouette for a laboratory next door, a facility which likely broadcasts a strong wireless internet signal. You may be able to connect to the signal from a different part of the house. Perhaps if you seek higher ground? 
You take your laptop and prepare to make the journey through the house. L less than V. L more than K. This causes the tree to be unbalanced, so your Silidex auto-balances itself. Now the laptop occupies the root card, while the other two items comprise the leaves. K less than L, V more than L. You examine a book on your desk. The Grimoire for Summoning the Zoologically Dubious. This book is absolutely indispensable for enthusiasts of your ilk, of which there are very few. You take the grimoire, G less than L, G less than K. You leave your bedroom. Hanging just next to your door in the hallway is a painting of an exquisite wizard. Your mother collects these awful things ironically. She must know how much you detest them, and there is no doubt in your mind she stores these dreadful things in the house to bother you. Down the hall to the right is the way to the observatory. Perhaps you will be able to connect from up there. Your mother's room is also in that direction. You will have to watch your step. You tiptoe to the observatory. You also approach a juncture in the hallway. Beyond that juncture is the observatory. This door leads up to the observatory. You haven't ventured up there in quite some time. The door opens to an exterior walkway, leading to the observatory entrance. You've seen less inclement weather before. Oh, the things you'll do to help out a friend. You first put your laptop down on the floor to get it situated. But removing it from the root card causes all the branches and leaves to be severed. Your items are dumped unceremoniously on the floor. You're in a hurry, sure, but that doesn't mean you can't take a moment to peek through the huge telescope. You find a gap in the clouds. It seems a flurry of smaller meteoroids is streaking steadily overhead. You're not sure what this means, but it is somewhat disconcerting. You stack the laptop on the grimoire to increase the maximum elevation. You'll need every advantage you can get. There are several signals being broadcasted from the laboratory, each one of relatively decent strength. One of them is mysteriously and quite conveniently unsecured, requiring no password. You select the signal and reconnect to the game with John. I'm back. Hurry up and open my door! Not that it even matters, I think I'm probably dead no matter what. Patience, you still haven't used the new totem. Huh? I believe it will create the item on the punch card. So what is it, like an apple or something? What good will that do? We'll see. I found no evidence that anyone has successfully created the item. And the content of the card appears to be variable from session to session. In one instance, it was described as an eggy locking thicket. Do we have enough of these building jewels to make it? According to the Athenium, it is a free item. This speaks of its importance. Now off you go. Well, there goes the rest of your build, Grist. Also, you probably should have just done this in the first place. You take the totem to the Alchemeter, but you've got to get those stupid blocks out the way first. The Colonel Sprite is getting awfully worked up about all this. You store the perfectly generic objects in your Fenalia Registry, potentially to be deployed at a later time. <laughs> 